Welcome back to A Cult from the Stars, A Call to Arms, Chapter 15. Point of View, Fleet Admiral Pop of the 3rd Defense Fleet. As soon as we received word that the enemy would be on their way, we were immediately mobilized to the most likely direction they were going to be coming from. Of course, this is space, so it's not like we can set up permanent battle lines. However, once we got there, we didn't have to wait very long. Less than six days, which is extremely fast in terms of space combat, especially the distance that need to be covered, we got word that they were coming. A basic armada of enemy showing up. Thankfully, the 4th and 8th fleets actually showed up to reinforce us, which really helped out and brought the pucker factor down from 2,000 down to about, oh, I don't know, 900. It didn't matter. Everyone was on edge because we did not know what was going to happen. That being said, I was at little at ease seeing how easily our ships tore their other ships apart. After... Looking through the debris field, we found that their ships were more designed for speed and firepower than they were designed for actually absorbing any type of hits. It was also very interesting not to find a single type of ballistic weapon. They had a type of harpoon, but almost everything they had as far as offensive weapons was energy-based. This was confusing to us because we know, especially in space combat, Unless you're really close, the lasers come apart on the way there. It doesn't matter what type, UV, particle, it doesn't matter. Out of the 500 types of lasers, forget it. They're all going to dissipate before they hit at that distance. The moment we found that they were decelerating out of FTL, which you have to do before you enter another galaxy simply due to the addition of gravity wells, we realized we were severely outnumbered. Their ships were dotting the skies as they jumped in. Immediately, we were all called to general quarters and all weapons were primed. Our ground pounders were actually a little pissed because the only thing they could do in this type of situation was to hand out ammo if we needed it or to go get wounded if we took any hits. Although, we were grateful that they were around their environmental suits so they could patch up any holes we got. That being said, they were well out of our range before anything started. Just to make sure that they were here with hostile intent, we did send out messages over and over, regard your intent, and you are trespassing on human territory. Stand down. They didn't care. Either they didn't receive us, which I doubt that was the case, or they just didn't care and just looked at us as more food and slaves for them. Everything began. As standard for human protocol, the first thing that happened is we fired our torpedoes and missiles in their direction. For those who don't know, torpedoes are much stronger. However, they are not very agile. They can take a hit from an energy blast one or two before detonated. However, missiles are far more agile, and are usually used to take down enemy fighter craft if they have any. We didn't see any. However, at this range, it wouldn't have mattered if they deployed or not. It would take them over 20 minutes just to even get close enough to use their weapons. That being said, we watched as dots of their over 500 ships just start disappearing off our screens. People looked at each other and said, this is too easy. And then we got a really bad surprise. Remember how I said their ships are built for speed? They realized that we had outranged them. So they got closer. And then they fired their own missiles at us. We found out that their missiles are, I guess you could say, cumbersome. They're not designed to kill. They're designed to puncture the hull and then feed a whole bunch of their own warriors in. What they didn't realize is our point defense systems are designed specifically to shatter those types of torpedoes and missiles. They didn't even get close, which again actually made my crew laugh. 
For a moment, I thought maybe I should just be drinking a coffee just to show how easy this is. Unfortunately, we did not have enough long-range weapons to take out their entire fleet. And we very soon came to the mercy and realization that we would have to turn this into a mid-range fight. Mid-range, of course, meant that our rail guns, our mat cannons, or whatever in the hell you want to call them, is going to fire. The enemy would also be within range that their energy weapons would start making some sort of a dent. This is what everybody expects in space combat when they first see any type of video game or any of that because it looks good on screen. It's not so fun when you're on the receiving end of their main cannon. Unfortunately for them, once they got into range, I gave the command all guns to fire at will. You could feel the ship shudder every time one of the cannons fired. They may be rail guns, but inertia is inertia, and vacuum's a bitch. Again, we saw more dots on our screen disappear as we got a good look at them. They were trying to dodge our cannon rounds as they came in. Kind of hard to dodge a tungsten round going at about three quarters the speed of light. Even though they had weak armor, it wouldn't have mattered at that point. That would even pierce this ship. It wasn't until we realized that their ships are obviously much faster and much more maneuverable than ours that we realized we might be in a little bit of trouble if they get too close. Well, they got too close. When their energy weapons first started opening up, we laughed because it wasn't even singeing the hull. We weren't laughing when they actually started melting the sides of our hull and we started getting small breaches here and there. Thankfully, we continued on with the slugfest even though I had to order a full reverse of our ships to try and get us some distance. That proved to be inconsequential. Their ships were on full burn towards us. although. Saying full burn is kind of strange to say when you're using a gravimetric drive. Thankfully, just as the enemy started getting within prime weapons range, our sensors started beeping. There was another larger fleet coming in. It wasn't the enemy's. It was our primary defense fleet. The first, second, 5th and 7th fleets were all showing up at the same time along with their associated carriers. The carriers immediately started dumping all sorts of drones out and filled the skies. Our computers actually couldn't fire without hitting one of our drones once they passed us, which took about a minute for them to get there. However, it was enough to actually cause all sorts of havoc in the enemy lines. With that in one swoop, they came in, and we lost approximately 14% of our drones on the first pass. However, as soon as they broke away, we fired our main guns back into their fleet and ripped them a new one. Quite literally, drove a hole from one end to the other. That is when the enemy must have realized that they were completely outmatched because they tried to run. The orders came in from the... First Defense Fleet Admiral. I don't want any of those bastards to escape. At that point, I didn't understand his vitriol at the time, but we followed orders. I told the gunners to empty everything. I don't want any ordnance left on this ship. And I swear I saw my tactical officer smile. Oh, he smiled big as he gave the order words echoing throughout the ship fire everything run them hot and then everything shuddered as every last torpedo every last missile every pdc point defense cannon if the enemy was close enough was just running everything dry we could feel a constant shudder as each of the rail guns the gauss rifles fired into the enemy fleet as they tried to turn these things tried to go full burn away. Wasn't happening. Not only were they getting pummeled by our main ships, but our drones were just tearing them small bits into their hulls one by one. Though each drone was only armed 
with a few small missiles and one main gun as an energy weapon, it was still enough to slow down, if not disable, a few of their ships. Yet, the enemy ran. We never thought they would run. But suddenly, without warning, they flipped. A 180 degree flip, and they burned straight at us. That was when people realized exactly what was going on. The enemy was going to try and take as many of us with them as possible. What they didn't realize is the main fleet had finally got online with us. And they were also emptying their guns as well. We may have taken losses, but it was a complete victory for us. The enemy fleet was now just floating hulks in space. We offered to pick up any sur uh, surrendering forces. However, none of them surrendered. It wasn't until after the battle that I received the debriefing from the head admiral that why his vitriol against the enemy. They showed us the videos that were taken from our refugees. I can't get the image out of my mind. Young prisoners being eaten, old ones being torn apart. They were doing horrible things to the females and sometimes even to the males. But what really, really twisted us the wrong way was when we saw a woman screaming in agony as her infant child was dropped into the enemy's maw and you heard the crunch and I swear that bastard looked at her licked its lips if you call those lips and smiled oh now we're pissed and guess what that video was accidentally leaked and now all of humanity is pissed off